So, welcome back to the little uh, video series with now the final um, episode, so to say. Um, in this uh, episode, we are going to do a little review of the printer after I have printed a few models and tried out a lot of settings. Um, so yeah, this is basically the final review, um, at least for now. Perhaps things change in the future, future, um, future-wise, so we'll see. But for now, let's start with the contra-argument. Why shouldn't you buy this printer? Um, well, first things first, lots of parts, like ridiculous amount of parts in my opinion almost. Um, this is obviously well something you have to deal with, um, but it's something you uh, can't prepare for and it's something that is, yeah, well, it's stated on the website, on the homepage, everywhere, that this printer comes as a kit. So no pre-assembled parts basically, yeah, well. That's something you have to deal with. So not everyone is into um, that and not everyone wants to do this. In this case, you won't get around uh, the fact that this one is a kit and you have to be prepared for that. That means you have to have the right tools and the knowledge to know how to deal with uh, the amount of parts and how not to basically um, destroy the printer before it even printed the first time. So the next um, part is basically, well, quality issues, and in my case, missing parts. Hopefully the last part with missing parts is not something that happens to you or anyone who is buying the printer, or at least not in, um, in any amount of quantity for parts that are uh, absolutely necessary, like the screws that I was missing. But it happened to me, so there's definitely a problem with quality assurance, um, with basic quality assurance for that even, because uh, counting parts is probably not that difficult to do, especially not on a big assembly line. But that's that's an issue. Also, quality issues in terms of um, how the parts are made, though not as big as I had feared it to be. So um, some of the aluminium profiles obviously were a little bit bent and the lead screws were a little bit bent but not um, too badly even though they are 600 millimeters long I believe, yeah something around that, even longer I believe. Uh, for that um, I really have to say that, it's, that they perform well so I don't think that it's a big problem. The aluminium profiles, well it's Unfortunately, I a little bit expected that they are a bit bent because they are not really uh, meant to be highly precise. Um, so yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's say it like that. But overall, there are a lot of quality issues in my opinion, um, which also I have documented in the Let's um, Build series, like the 4.5 part and the 6.5 part. But that's something you have to deal with. Uh, then price. Well, the Sprinter is not something for uh, someone who just wants to start out in terms of price either um, because, as you can see here, this is a, a screenshot I took from the Troxy site. Um, currently at 947.05 um, with a discount, as you can see, um, regular price is just below a thousand bucks. So. Yeah, well, not the cheapest printer, especially not cheap for a kit printer, but I mean, it's what it is. Um, the pro arguments are going to be made later about this, so we are only going to focus on the neg negatives here, um, why you shouldn't buy the printer. Uh, last part, it's obviously not for business. This is a kit printer. It is meant for hobbyists, so don't even think about using this one for 24 hour operations. That's not going to work with this one. It's not made for that um, kind of workload, nor is it intended, intended for that. Um, the problem is A, first it comes as a kit, so 
normally in business you don't really want it as a kit. Um, you want a pre-built product to be able to use it immediately when it comes because frankly every day you build this one it is basically losing your money. Um, the second thing why it's not business is because um, well there's no warranty basically. I mean sure there is supposed to be warranty but um, let's face it um, trying to figure out how to deal with warranty cases um, with the with the dealer where you buy it or with the um, with Franxi themselves is going to be a little bit tough. Yeah, this is a problem. And there's also no one who can really guarantee to repair it. So that is not going to easily happen. So no 24-hour support, with, which is often asked for in business use cases. And the last part, as I have already mentioned, 24-hour um, printing is not going to work with this one. It's going to break down eventually, really down fast even, because all of the parts aren't meant for that kind of workload, continuous workload. And the last part or the next part is the software which comes with the printer. So the um, printer has the control board, the main board, which comes with G2 I believe, or it is definitely G2. Fortunately, uh, the software pre-installed on the board at least has all the securities in place in terms of overheating. Um, so it shouldn't burn down your house, which is, I, I think, a plus. But um, I also think that this is something that should be considered um, standard. Um, but, uh, well, I'm going to say it anyway here. I'm going to mention it anyway here because um, some previous versions of this printer, or not only of this printer, but the smaller versions, actually don't have that enabled. Um, the second thing about software, the Tronxy uh, Slicer, well, it has some issues because it is um, an older version of Cura, which was rebranded basically for Tronxy, though they didn't bother to put all the settings into Cura, so you have to uh, enter some of the settings from the manual into Cura. Why they are doing this, I, I have no clue, but they are doing this. Um, but I am planning to release my settings, um, which I'll explain a little bit later, um, because I found a lot of optimizations and also a lot of fixes for problems that the printer has. So something we can mitigate, hopefully. And the last part, it's big. Like it's really, really big. As you can see, um, the dimensions are not easy to carry around. So basically, where you build the printer is going to be where the printer is going to stand finally. Uh, you're not going to be able to move this thing around much, especially not because um, it will get misaligned. Um, the printing results will be well diminished because of that. So yeah, I would recommend to build the printer where it's going to be. Um, and you should make sure that you have ample space because these uh, measurements here are not the final measurements. Um, you will need a little bit more uh, depth, depth here because uh, your spools um, of the filament are also going to be behind the machine. And the width is also not completely right because, well, you have the power supply on the side. So yeah, and it's also really, really, really heavy. Uh, not easy to move, basically. But let's go to why you should a printer, why you should print with this printer and why you should buy it. First things, uh, it's a CoXY machine. The, the print results are actually quite good. Um, even though this printer is really big and it has really long belts, which normally is not that great for a printer because it introduces some, um, can introduce some uh, ghosting though, because it uses the CoXY, principle, um, it's not as bad as, uh, as it could be. Uh, for a matter of fact, uh, I have printed a few things here to show a little bit off. Um, the, very, well, the very first print here was this calibration tube. Um, it turned out quite well. Even without changing any settings, I used the Tronxy slicer and no 
manual adjust adjustments except for those that are mentioned in the manual. Um, frankly, there's basically no ghosting. The, the, the dimensions were accurate and uh, no string. But on the other hand, I, I mean, it's, it's a calibration cube, so what do you expect? Um, the second thing I printed, obviously, a banshee. Um, I did not remove any strings or any support material, though there's obviously no support material with a banshee because you want to stress the printer. Um, as you can see here, there is some stringing. It's not bad, but it's not great either. Uh, I also have to mention this is done with the uh, included sample material, which is not the highest quality, but I, I meant, hey, let's use it because that's basically what you get in the box. So uh, let's see what they thought um, to provide you with. So these two turned out relatively well. After that, I did a bunch of calibration cubes, as you can see. There are a, sh a ton of them. Um, I did that to calibrate the bed to see whether the bed was uh, warped any place and how good the auto leveling works. And honestly, it works pretty darn well. All of the cubes stuck to the bed like glue and um, overall no printing failure. So pretty darn good. A lot of stringing obviously because I, I honestly wouldn't want to wait for them to be printed, so I cranked up the settings to max, basically, and said, uh, let's go print. But they turned out, they turned out really good. Honestly, really good. Uh, then I thought, okay, let's do one of the other standard tests. Um, this one was, in my opinion, really not that great. Um, the, the, yeah, well, they don't turn really well. As you can see here, the um, distances between the parts here in the middle and the outer shell should normally be enough to let them freely rotate. But as you can see, only the 0.5 millimeters and the 0.35 millimeters are actually going to turn. The other ones, um, while trying to break them loose, oh, they snap in half. So, yeah, not that great. So, well, that's something, but. Um, the good thing is I managed to get that uh, under control with a few settings. So all of these parts that you can see here are printed with the default settings. Um, after some adjustments, I managed to print this uh, chainmail here. And uh, as you can see, it prints surprisingly well. It is completely fluent and I didn't have to break it loose or anything. So a really good part. And as you can see, it really is chainmail, so no problem with that. I also printed one of um, the models that were included on the SD card, which was this, this one. It was pre slice the cheat code. Um, again, no removing of strings or anything with Cray PLA. Turned out great, in my opinion. I mean, it really is a do it really works well, so no problem there. I also did one of these for overhangs and um, basically stringing. And uh, I did, again, not remove any stringing or anything. So this is the result I got. All the strings still there and overall strings are not that bad. So pretty darn good actually. Um, I did a test with uh, PATG, um, green PATG, a Benchy and dialed in settings for PATG and here again, no strings removed, but there was no stringing. That's surprisingly good. And the final test with the uh, standard settings was this one. As you can see, it's not that great, especially here, because it was printed lying down, facing down some of the parts. Um, well, that's where the support was stuck to a little bit. But it is mechanically functional, so I see this as a good thing. And the last part here was a pretty damn big model. Um, I thought let's go and see what this printer is going to be able. And this one took, let me think about it, I think about six days, yeah, somewhere around that, five or six days to print. And honestly, I mean, for a printer this size, 
which isn't really meant for details, it turned out great. Really, really good. So, let's go to the next part, which is, well, it is very big, obviously. I think I skipped something, no. It's very big. Well, as you can see, this uh, would normally not fit in the normal print bed. I haven't done a big print yet, so uh, unfortunately I can't show this off. But a print bed of 500 by 500 by 600 is going to be massive. So whatever you want to print, it's probably going to fit in there. Um, the good thing is if you have uh, parts that need uh, to be um, uh, rigid, so you can't glue them easily, um, this is the printer which is going to well, fix that problem. Um, yeah, it's just crazily big. You can basically print whatever you want. Um, also, a pro is obviously it's easy to modify. You can add an, a second feeder to the whole printer to make it kind of dual extrusion. Uh, so two in, one out. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as it may get uh, jammed easily because it has uh, one nozzle where both filaments have to go through and it can't mix the filaments so it may get easily jammed. But in terms of modifications, I mean it's relatively easy to modify. The aluminium profiles are standard profiles so you can pretty much bolt on anything you want. You can uh, exchange, change the uh, mainboard, you can change all the things. So. Honestly, not that bad in terms of accessibility for uh, modifying it. Also, like changing it to an all metal hot end is also a possibility, which I'm definitely going to do just to try out what I can get out of this machine. And the final, well, building it. It's quite interesting and fun to build it, even though it's a pain in the ass to be fair with some of the missing parts and some of the quality issues. It was quite enjoyable to build too build this one. Really enjoyable to build this one. So this can be a pro, can be a negative. Some people want their printers to come assembled, some people want their printers to be in a kit form because they enjoy building it basically. Also um, the pro about this is you're going to know your machine pretty well um, after you've built it. So modifying it should be easy. And the final part of the summary or of this review is the summary obviously sorry about this but um should you buy this printer well i guess it depends um if you have the money and you need this printer for something very specific then i guess that's the only choice because uh, i don't think you're going to get any printer bigger than this at least not in uh, for the hobbyists um this is just r ridiculously sized to be honest, and um, printing it with a 0.4 nozzle is kind of a waste, so you may go ahead and uh, install a 0.6 nozzle or even a 0.8 with a Vulcan hot end, and you're going to be able to print parts that are just insane in size. So that's quite a big pro in my argument. But on the other hand, um, you need a lot of space for this one. Um, it's not going to be a daily driver. Because um, if you have a nozzle like a 0.6 or 0.8, you are going to lose a lot of details. So that's something to be aware of. Um, I really um, am surprised that they actually delivered a printer with a 0.4 nozzle, even though this is just a crazy size. So should you buy it? I guess, again, it depends on you. Have you, you need the use case for this printer, which is printing bit parts. If you have this use case, then I guess this is pretty much your only option. Um, there are a few smallers, like I think the Anycubic Chiron, something like that, which is a 400, I think 400, yeah, something like that. And some other ones which are um, a little bit smaller in size, so those, those are obviously uh, options, but they often use a moving uh, hotbed, um, so uh, i3 style. Uh, printer which in for sizes for this for for print sizes like this it's going to introduce a lot of ghosting so the core XY um, system is superior for size this this large even though the belts are getting really long 
but with a little bit of darling in the printer, I guess this is going to be working quite well. And I'm really impressed with this printer and I'm happy to have uh, bought it, even though with, again, the quality issues, which really annoyed me. But can I recommend it? I guess so, yes. It's, if you have the use case, sure, this printer is going to work for you. Um, especially if you don't have any adversity against modifying it, because that's going to be something you probably are going to need to do to get uh, decent results from this printer. But it's a lot better than something like an um, ANET A8. It's, it's not even in the same league in terms of printing quality from the get-go. So with that, I guess we're going to close the review. Um, um, well, this is the final part of uh, my little adventure with this printer. Or more like it's not a final part, but uh, for this series, there are going to be a lot of parts about um, modifying it, especially about the software, um, because as far as I have seen, there is no official versions uh, of the settings files for Cura out there, so perhaps I'm going to make a more or less official uh, release of the um, settings, which I found out to work well for me. And uh, well, we will see we are, where we are going with this. So hopefully this was as much fun for you to watch as it was for me to build this printer. And I hope that you enjoyed this little video.